Hi everyone, this is the second part of the lesson on how to supercharize myomuscle immunoprojection and the last of this series. These are the questions I'll try to answer today. Um, first, have the superior deep tissues been shown on the image as far as possible? And what about the middle deep tissues and the inferior one? Uh, these are a few of the many questions we have to ask ourselves looking at the mammogram we have just produced. What do I mean by superior deep tissues? Uh, we are talking about uh, the axillary tail and the pectoralis myer and posteriorly the latissimus dorsi. To uh, obtain an adequate uh, width and to your posterior direction of all deep tissues, you know, I recommend this technique for the patient placed not frontally to the detector but majorly to it, as I showed uh, to you in the last lesson, guiding uh, the patient towards the detector without rotation. In order to include the latissimus dorsi, you should perform this first rotation according to my method, directed superiorly and anteriorly, then shoulder kept still, the second one directed superiorly and this time posteriorly. This second rotation has to be followed by a forward stretching of the arm, elbow flexed and pushed down, hand relaxed. Purpose of this maneuver is to eliminate faults. The uh, oblique you see here shows a perfect documentation of the deep superior tissues, uh, which is not always possible to achieve, of course, but is something to strive for. In the first image, uh, the patient has Definitely stiffened, you see, the fold in the deep superior tissues, but we have to say the positioning technique was not properly performed. Rotations are missing, uh, the arm is not relaxed. Uh, the documentation of the superior deep tissues in image 2 is due to a uh, joint pathology. We have to consider the fact that pathologies such as uh, rotator cuff disease are common enough in women and could lead to sometimes significant rejection in shoulder stability and mobility. We have to ask the patient if she can move her shoulder and arm uh, before doing any movement, especially if we notice a certain rigidity of the patient. Attention should be paid to the latissimus dorsi documentation, which should appear as a triangle in the upper inner corner of the image. Here you can see examples of exaggerated documentation of latissimus, usually associated with the creation of more or less important faults. The patient here is too much forward onto the taxa with the uh, lateral deep tissues, I mean. Let's move on to consider the middle deep tissues. Again, we have to know, looking at the image we've just produced, what needs to be done in case we have to repeat. First example, there is a concavity uh, between the superior and middle parts of the pectoralis myer muscle. Uh, this one is usually related to problems of a, a functional impotence of the arm and shoulder, so no correction can be done. In the second image, the concavity is in the central part of the pectoralis myer. The reasons are mainly two. 
either the patient has become very stiff or we have lost tissue stretching it posteriorly trying to correct the faults from behind the chest. Again, at least in a case like that, it doesn't need a repetition. This kind of muscle here you see in image 2, I call it a spooled shape muscle. Same patient, same projection here. The shape of the muscle is correct in both cases. But you can see what happened in the first one. A very important and extended fold was created in the retromammary space. This is a patient with a slender thorax. Folds are easily formed between the deep lateral tissues and the taxa. We have to correct that, even if in this case there is no gland there. What to do then? We have to stretch the tissue from behind the thorax, posteriorly, very carefully, so as not to displace tissue that we have to show on the image. But we talk about that in the last video. Another interesting annotation to be made here, uh, there is a slight inclination, uh, a bending of the thorax uh, forwards in the first image, corrected in the second having thorax and hips aligned generally allows us to show more deep inferior tissue. Let me be uh, clearer. Um, patient posture is an aspect uh, that we have already dealt with in the first two videos of this series for the CC projection. It is very important for MLA projection to thorax and hips must be on the same line. If the patient bows towards the detector, that is to say bends at the waist, lower tissue will be surely missing. But also, if the patient uh, leans too far forwards onto the detector with her shoulder and arm, for a sort of balancing, uh, she will usually keep her hips back. Again, this leads to the loss of the inferior tissues. Shape and length of the pictorized mire can in effect be uh, determined uh, by an improper patient posture. First, uh, image, shape and width of the muscle in the anterior posterior direction are uh, correct. Too much latissimus though. And in fact, uh, this has, let's say, inhibited the uh, documentation of IMF. In the second one, in addition to the loss of a great part of the tissues, um, you could also notice the triangular shape of the muscle, usually associated with this posture. In both cases, the correction requires bringing her hips forward and checking the proper position of arm and shoulder. In a way, only the second one should be reacquired. Two examples um, of common nose mammography in image two, Petrolis Maya is correct. Just realigned the hips with the thorax to regain the lost inferior tissue. In the first image, Positioning of arm and shoulder should be corrected. Posture 2. The patient's hips must be rotated in the lateral direction, that is to say, towards the sexa, to recover the deep medial tissues that are missing. Take a look now at these two images of the same patient. In the first, the right MLO, the muscle is correct. In the second one, the left MLO, the superior portion is uh, adequate, correct. There is a fold uh, you see here, which is the proof of patient's uh, stiffening. The central part uh, is not correct, uh, it's concave. And the muscle disappears before the PNL. 
meaning that the retro memory space on the right is complete, but not the one in the left terminal. Part of it is missing. Had there been a legend, it would have been lost. The correction to be made are, first of all, asking the patient to relax the whole upper limb and let us to guide her without making any movements on her own. Then check that no folds have been formed behind and then make her rotate her hips laterally to reach the deep major tissues, bringing them onto the taxa so to gain more muscle in length. Then perform the up and out maneuver. And what is it? The breast must be well raised, as shown in the picture here, then stretched anteriorly. Remember, most of the gland is in the uh, breast anterior part. Rotating the patient hips until the nipple is in profile allows the posterior inferior quadrant, the one above the IMF, and the IMF itself to be shown on the image. But most of all, since it is the today's topic, central and inferior parts of the petrolis maya could be documented properly. Take a look at this example here that I reckon illustrative. Same woman, same projection, as you see, not an easy portion to make a mammography to tends to stiffen, the breast is not very mobile. In fact, image one, typical uh, fold in the muscle associated with this anatomy. I am thoroughly present. A posterior quadrant and inferior portion of retinal memory space are not fully documented. Image 2, a far better relaxation obtained, a better documentation of the superior part of the mesial part, and inferior tissues too. You see the IMF, the posterior uh, inferior quadrant, and the retro memory space inferior part. Um, this is just uh, following uh, the uh, instruction, the recommendation I gave to you. Note that here we have the full documentation of the gland, which in this patient extends very deeply. Please compare. It is difficult to both Teach and learn how to do uh, mammography, as outlined in international literature. One should acquire a large number of competencies before starting to work as a breast radiographer. I list some of them here. Um, the job is very difficult indeed, but not only totally because of that, it's highly satisfying. Well, this is it for today. See you in the next video, hopefully. Bye-bye. <laughs>